Listen to the full audio series on the Pocket FM app. Click on the link in the description to install now. Robert told Emma that he had brought food for her, and a cute smile appeared on Emma's face. But when she opened the packet, she saw that it was not food, but her favorite dessert. You're in a bad mood, and I've read somewhere that a girl's favorite dessert makes her mood better. Robert was right. Emma's mood did get better after she had some of the dessert. Now it was time for Robert to ask questions. So, tell me now, why were you in a bad mood? What happened today? Let's not talk about it. It'll only make you angry. I have a feeling that it's the Meyer family again, isn't it, Emma? I'll deal with- No, please. I mean, I don't like William, and I don't want to be involved with them. If you trouble them, they'll assume it's because of me, and I don't want to see them again. The Ericsons and the Myers have always been at war. They won't blame you. Robert, I have been meaning to ask you, what kind of rivalry do the Erickson and Meyer families have? Why are you guys so afraid of each other? <laughs> afraid of the Meyer family? Are you serious? We've never been afraid of them. Rather, the other way around. Anyway, it shouldn't matter to you. You're not one of them. Thanks for not considering me one of them, but I want to know. What do you have against them? Emma, I'll give you an answer to anything but that. Some secrets are better left alone. Trust me, you don't want to know. You enjoy your dessert. I'm leaving. After Robert left, Emma got a call from an unknown number. It was Barb, Robert's secretary, asking for him. Barb informed Emma that Robert was in the middle of a meeting when he suddenly got up and left. Barb hadn't been able to reach Robert on the phone and told Emma that if Robert didn't join back the meeting in the next few minutes, they would lose a multi-million dollar deal. There was silence on both ends of the call, but after a minute, Barb informed Emma that Robert was back. Thank God, and thank you for informing me, Barb. After Barb disconnected the call, Emma felt guilty and lay on her bed thinking. Robert left a meeting just to give her some desserts. If he didn't close the deal, she was sure to blame herself. The next morning, she woke up to her phone ringing. It was Samuel. Samuel? It's a weekend and it's 7 in the morning. What is going on? Sister, I'm sorry, but I just called you to ask if you're going to come home to check on Robert today. He lost his temper at the maids and they're all scared to go to him now. Check on Robert? Why? What happened to him? You don't know? Did you guys have a fight? Robert ate something, and his stomach has been hurting since last night. Oh, okay. Thanks for informing me, Samuel. Emma made some chicken soup and packed it for Robert. She went straight to Robert's mansion. Robert was in his study when she arrived. Emma, what are you doing here? Are you okay? Yes, I am, but you're not. I brought some soup for you, and you're going to have it without any complaints. Robert followed whatever Emma asked of him like a child while keeping his eyes constantly on her. Why are you staring at me? You're making me uncomfortable. I was waiting for your call and you suddenly appeared right in front of me. I'm shocked. Saying that, Robert pulled Emma close to him. Emma tried hard to free herself from his grip, but it was all in vain. Robert, let go of me. Are you not going to give me the medicine? I won't take it if you try to go away. Emma had no choice but to do as he said. After Robert took the medicine, he freed Emma from his grip, and Emma left for her home. A few days later, Emma and Robert were just hanging out. Emma had just come back from university and was too tired to even talk. You seem so tired, Emma. Do you want to change your job? I can- No, no. Even though it's tiresome, I enjoy it. Being a teacher is important for me, Robert. Why? Who wants to be a teacher anyway? It was my mom's dream for me to be a teacher. To teach and educate people. So you want to be a teacher for your mom? What about your dreams? Emma ignored Robert's question and went to sleep. Robert didn't wake her up as she was already tired and left. A few days later, Emma completed her training and was finally starting as a teacher at the university. It was her first day and she ran into the most unexpected person. This year we have three new colleagues. First, this is Ted Smith, who will start working in the student office from today onwards. Emma froze upon hearing these words. Does she have to work with Ted every day? How did this happen? When did Ted decide to be a teacher? Hello, Emma. You're sweating like a porous pitcher. Save it for later. You're going to need it. Vivi White, who is in charge of the new students in the civil engineering department, and Emma Green, who is in charge of industrial and commercial management. Are there any questions? Yes. What if one of the workers is trying to take advantage of his position to seek personal revenge? <laughs> Miss Green, are you afraid I'm going to target you? 
The entire room went silent, but Emma managed to smile and walk away without creating a big fuss on her first day. Soon, everyone started discussing whether Ted had joined just to target Emma. Everyone in the university knew that Ted wasn't ready to break up with Emma. During the lunch break, Emma was thinking about Ted being her boss and what all she could do to avoid him. Emma was lost in her thoughts when Samuel popped up and sat opposite of her. Sister, you're lost in your thoughts. What are you thinking? Samuel, don't call me sister here. People will hear you and- Calm down. Nobody knows who I am or who my brother is. Anyway, I'm going on a mission. Wish me luck. Mission? What kind of mission are you going on, Mr. Samuel Erickson? Robert has asked me to spy on you. I won't let another man sway you. Your brother is too funny. <laughs> right. You're the prettiest girl in the history of Northern City University, who is also a top student, and who has broken several of the school's records. Originally, I wasn't going to spy on you for my brother, but after I saw how other kids were drooling over you, I knew I had to help him. Otherwise, if you were actually swooned away, my brother would kill me. Okay, but don't call me sister. You can call me Miss Green like everyone else around here. I can live with that. When we're here, I'll talk to you professionally, but otherwise, I'll call you sister. Emma smiled and headed to the counselor's room. As she was about to open the door to get in, she heard her name being discussed by the other counselors. They were all discussing how Emma made a scene on her first day and how she shouldn't have broken up with Ted in the first place. Emma decided not to go in and went to sit on the stairs instead. But even there, Emma couldn't ignore and saw a few students talking about her. They didn't notice Emma sitting right there. Did you see her? Emma Green? Everyone is going crazy about her. The boys are saying that she's the prettiest counselor. Yes, I'm a girl and even I found her pretty. She's dropped a gorgeous. I don't blame the guys. By the way, did you see her sitting with the student in the canteen? Do you know who he is? I know who he is. Emma's heart skipped a beat. If they found out about Samuel, they're gonna start digging and eventually find out about Robert. She couldn't let that happen. How will Emma stop people from finding out about Robert? Will it affect her reputation at school? How will she handle the whole situation given this was her first job? To know what happens next. Hi guys, Emma here. Listen to full episodes of Cupid's Curse exclusively on the Pocket FM app. Click the link in the description or simply search Pocket FM on Play Store or App Store to install now.